Hello there. Do you want to build your own Halloween pumpkin with LED eyes? I know I did, and last year I, I did this following some various instructions I found on the web, and I thought it looked quite good, so um, I thought I'd describe what I did there in case somebody else wants to do it, because it's pretty simple. So this is an Arduino-based project. An Arduino is a little programmable board with inputs and outputs and a, a main processor unit, um, and they're fairly easy to program. This is uh, an official Leonardo uh, Arduino Leonardo board, which costs a lot, but you can get uh, very cheap ones on the net, like Geek Credit, which is like under three pounds. Um, and I'll, I'll link down below, and I share some pictures here. Um, and I, I was experimenting with uh, this thing. This is called uh, an Adafruit NeoPixel Shield. A shield is something that basically sits on top of an original board, and this has uh, you can basically do multi colours on each thing and that. And I, I did my own code to do some eyes and I thought that was quite good fun, maybe I should buy another one of these. But these are a little bit more expensive and then when I had a look around the net I saw people using this thing called the Max uh, 7219 board which is an 8x8 matrix of lights which I thought that's quite good and they're super cheap. Um, on Banggood there are like a couple of pounds each. So I bought two of those and they, they look like this, so quite a bit smaller than the shield and really much more suitable for trying to stick in a pumpkin uh, and you can imagine you can get a little bit of expression on a little 8 by 8 pixels and you get them with these jumper cables so when you order two it's simply a case of plugging it goes in here out here up to the next one and you can plug them in in series and and basically do things with them so when I looked around I found people have already created open source projects for this so I thought I'd I just go and get one. Now I did this last year and I couldn't find originally who whose code I used and when I was looking around for LED lights there's loads of open source projects out there. Have a look on GitHub just looked for LED lights or uh, Max 7219 and you'll find a load to do but the one I'm using is is called LED Eyes um, and I'll again link to it down below and, and show you here. It's just single file and it has one uh, prerequisite which is the LED control library uh, again linking below and if you don't know how to get libraries into uh, your Arduino uh, ID there's an excellent page on it here and uh, again I'll link it down below and if you don't know anything about the Arduino uh, IDE it's really simple, just go, I, I, I won't do it in great detail because there's loads of tutorials out there, but just go to the arduino.cc website, there's a great page called Getting Started which tells you where you can install the desktop ID and how to go from there. So we're going to assume that you've got that installed and you've managed to install the prereq and you've got the code there. Uh, the rest of it I'll be doing for you. There's of course a few other bits you need to do, you need to be able to provide power to your Arduino board to then supply power to these guys. Now I do um, RC stuff so I've got a load of great big batteries like this with an XT60 connector so what I got myself is one of these little XT60 to USB uh, outputs and then I can power the whole thing with like a USB cable um, and that will power the this and those bits no problem. As long as you've got something that will give you an adequate amount of power either in one of these barrel plugs where it's like a 9 volt input or a 5 volt USB supplying a reasonable amount of amps uh, you're okay. I've gone like use a battery and be completely wireless so you can just you know stick a wire from some plug socket if you want to or some like um, USB charger power to go in. That will do it. Now there's an extra bit I needed because these come with uh, female to female jumper cables and I've already got female cables here. So if I, I've also got these male to male jumper cables because what I can do is basically plug one of those in that end and then easily plug one of those in there. But these jumper cables cost next to nothing so if you've got female on this end um, I think the thing I would recommend is getting a set of these male to female jumper cables so you can replace the ones in here and go straight into your Arduino board without this extra bit of fuss there. But anyway, all you will need to do is connect your Arduino board to the USB cable, plug that into your computer, 
Okay, so you need your pumpkinized code on the screen. You don't have to do anything with it. But what you will need to double check is that you've got the right board selected. I've got my oops, uh, Arduino Leonardo, depending what board you have or what cob you have, it could be anything down here. And you obviously need the right port, which I've got. It tells me very obvious here on Windows, expect some sort of, um, what's it even called, com something or other. From that point on, you should just be able to press the upload button and it should compile it and upload it to your Arduino. Okay, this is actually quite useful to have. I was hoping it might come up. <laughs> if you get a situation like this where it's like it's not responding, it means it's busy running the program. Um, so what you need to do is literally what it says. You've got a reset button on the board. Hit upload, hit reset. It puts it in a position where it's ready to um, get the sketch on. And that's it, done uploading. Obviously at this point nothing's going to happen because the LEDs are over here and we need to connect these together. But anyway, now we've got the code actually on the board, let's go into a, a close-up situation so I can tell you exactly how these all connect together and, and what you do then. Okay, so here's all the bits and pieces we need. So I'm going to start connecting these together. The ones I'm going to do first is actually connecting one of these to the other so this is the sort of in so this will go to the board and then there's an out which goes to the in the next one you, you can carry on chaining them together and the only thing i'd say about this it doesn't really matter on the colors but the top pin there is vcc and the next one is ground so the only thing i wanted to be sure of is that i didn't muck those up because that's that's will be where things explode if you reverse the polarity there so i'm going to use the red wire for VCC and the brown wire for ground and then I'm just going to use these ones at random but you know I keep them in the order that they are and basically what we do we just follow this through so it's exactly the same colors coming into the out um, at the top of this one so that's that one connected to there and then we do the same thing coming out of here it's probably flexible this wire that's where it could be better okay so this then needs to be plugged into the right sockets here um, and what we need to do is for, for my case I need to put some male to male jumpers in hopefully you won't have to uh, and if I was you know thinking ahead I'd have really done better things here but I've got vaguely color coordinated ones for the important ones <laughs> and then I've got three completely yellow wires which isn't very useful if you can match it up it will be obviously be much easier to do things with i'm just going to stick these in as is so once again the important ones are the vcc and the ground and you will have somewhere on your board a power thing which will say five volt and ground so you want to get the five volt out there and the ground of which there will be many of them will go there so the rest of it um it's down to these pins if you look at the actual code you'll notice there's this thing saying pin eyes din 12 cs 11 clk 10 this is the digital pins which are here so you just basically have to match that up so where it says din 12 you look at the din which is the orange one and the orange goes to here and that plugs into 12 like so and then CS, which is yellow, which goes to yellow, goes into 11. Like so, and then the last one, the CLK, goes into 10. Like so, which at this point, we then have this sort of thing. So what we need to do here is get the USB cable and connect the battery up. So USB cable goes in like so and then like so let's, let's give it some power that's got power and we've got something happening there to turn these lights down so we can see a bit better and we see what we've got there is some eyes. The eyes line up next to each other. You can in the code reverse them in case we want to put one up the other, other way out, but 
yeah, that's about it. Now all we have to do is put them in a pumpkin. And let's take a jump cut to last year where I actually did this. Well, hello and welcome to the kitchen where I will be cutting up this pumpkin. It's uh, a white pumpkin grown by my friend John in his uh, allotment and uh, a really lovely shape to it. I am going to be attempting to put in there this Leonardo Arduino, these two LED matrices uh, and this little XT60 to USB power converter to run it all and also this 5000 milliamp free S battery. Um, I do not profess to be a pumpkin carver. Uh, essentially if I can make some eyes of approximately that size to poke those through uh, I will be happy and some sort of slit there for the mouth and uh, I guess we see what happens from there but yeah let's get carving and let's see if it fits. And away I carve. This is a really massive thick pumpkin so I'm mainly using a knife. The only thing I did with any detail is to try and measure out about the size of the LEDs so that I knew the exact square that I'd be cutting for the eyes. The rest of it was just a kind of freehand thing and I used some proper cutters for some of it and just the details on the teeth. Okay well the pumpkin is carved but we can't simply put the LEDs in because the wall of the actual pumpkin just take a look at how big that is so we're not going to get these things flush against the top there if we've got all this so I'm going to have to work on cutting that down so bear with me while I do that and what I'm doing here is really just trying to thin down as much of that material around the eyes as I can just taking it as far in as possible we have the situation where I can now poke those in and they look reasonable in both. Now the way to do this was because there's so much sticking out the side there is what I've done is try to thin down, it's going upside down, try to thin down really around here so this is as thin as it can be really. Just see my fingers sticking through, it's much thinner than the rest of it and a bit of a pain. It's not perfect by any means but um, it'll do. Now obviously what we don't want is wetness all over here. So what I'm trying to do with a piece of kitchen roll is just get as much of the moisture out of here as possible. I mean some of it will just dry out anyway but I want to test it. Okay so the eyes are in there. They're not quite as flush as I would have liked but I think they create the okay effect. Getting them to stay in was a bit Heath Robinson to say the least. If we go on in there you see what I've got here is uh, a bit of a bent paper clip. I've got some electrical tape on the back just so it won't cause any shorts. That one, um, one push pin which I gave up on and two bits of barbecue skewer to hold it. Right now the Arduino is just sitting on the bottom. That's going to sit on the zippy. Uh, that's in actually storage charge at the moment. So I'm also going to put a voltage alarm on the balance lead just to make sure nothing happens but I don't think it'll have a problem. And I need to squeeze somehow a light source in there as well. And there you go, that's the finished product. And I think it's really quite effective. Now, for the light source, what I did is I found one of these battery-powered LED candles and I just shoved it in the bottom. Um, and although it was big, this is a big pumpkin, so all that stuff could fit in easily. Now, the battery I used would have lasted about a week. You don't need anything like something this big, so you can use something quite a bit smaller. I think it makes quite an impact. But if you're looking for any sort of wow children, forget it. They, they're they only turning up to get the candy, sweets, chocolate. They don't really care what's going on outside. So the only, ooh, that's good, you'll hear is from sort of fellow dads or parents coming around thinking, damn, they've out-pumpkined me. I haven't got the artistic ability to carve something impressive, so I can at least make mine look around. But there you go. Um, I hope that's of use to you, and I'll catch you in another video sometime. Happy Halloween.